Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another model tank video. Today we're going to be looking at the Airfix 176 scale Panther used by the Germans in World War II. The original tooling and model kit was released in 1961. This is the nostalgic vintage classic box art edition released in 2019 under the label of Hornby. Unboxing the model we are greeted with a plastic bag containing five runners one hull piece in the traditional form of a center run and parts spanning out. I can tell that the mold or tooling may have been reproduced with the same specs as the castings is far tighter smoother and the detail a little more poppy than the original release with a higher quality plastic. Did not notice any warpage, tags or extra flash or distorted ejector pin marks. We are also greeted with some fine covered water slide decals and a very large A4 instruction sheet laying out all the instructions quite clearly and giving a few tips how to attempt this scale model. The feedback received online that this kit is really popular and nostalgic. A lot of people have uh, fond uh, memories in building it and being quite a positive experience in assembling it. However, there is quite a bit of uh, criticism in its uh, proportions, size, detail and layout. Due to the fact that this is the go-to model that people have built up the decades ago or the Etsy one, this is given a pass to show that progression of how far model making tooling and the detail of kits has come over the years. My efforts in building this pursuit is to show the history of what sort of kits and styles of builds we had to go through in the past rather than attempting the most historical and accurate machine that was actually depicted in World War II, as well as putting a modern twist in painting, assembling and finishing it to polish it up for an appealing look to display in person and on social media. This particular release of tanks and aircraft being released by Airfix under the classics nostalgic vintage line does have a bit of a significance and particularly important for Australia. Later on in the 70s and 80s the Australian government actually passed law in the censorship of uh, toys and toy packaging to remove incidences of uh, violence where gun barrels with a flash would uh, be airbrushed out and the depiction of soldiers or any form of explosions and violence would have to be scrubbed or the box art completely redesigned or renewed for Australian consumption. This prompted Airfix to use the same box art worldwide in uh, fears that other countries might cotton on. It's good to see the original box art sold and displayed nowadays as a collectible and targeting adults and the elderly who were children way back in the day when it did reach store shelves. It is also very interesting to look at the layout of the runners with the center run for the channel flow of injected material into each of the pieces as it wasn't a frame when displayed in clear bags or uh, the box was rustled around parts would have a tendency of uh, bending off, breaking, falling out or being lost. This is why we see manufacturers and much later releases of Airfix kits utilizing the actual boarded frame runner for more stability and strength in the frame to prevent parts from distorting, breaking or warping. You'll also notice that there is no snap fit uh, component and all parts roughly fit loose. The cement and glues at the time were very thick and of the consistency of gel which would leave excess material behind and not the flush finish of today. This would ooze out and be sanded back later where today we would deploy 
putties and all sorts of sanding methods. The detail for the molds, if recessed, would uh, break off plastic and wear over time, where raised detail was far easier to make an impression and mold. So the reason why you see raised panels that you would dry brush through hand painting, not so much filling with a uh, weathering wash or a sludge wash. Weathering was not much of a consideration until much later on with competitive magazine and display kits. A lot of people who were converting older kits from the 80s and 90s to early 2000s standards would sand the surface clean and rescribe all the details required, which is quite tedious, leading to people to lead on to more expensive kits that would have inscribed detail. This sort of uh, aspect is no longer talked about as almost all vintage models has now been replaced with an overseas uh, counterpart of uh, far greater proportion and accuracy. This also led to the decline of the need for aftermarket resin cast parts, landing gear, that sort of thing to outclass injection molding techniques and get sharper detail or bits that are just not possible to do in plastic which would be far more expensive than the kit itself. Nowadays multimedia kits uh, include everything and they're far more accessible via the internet. In the end, Airfix's marketing goal was always to manufacture an overabundance, make it mainstream and sell it as a quick pastime for kids to build and slaver on some enamel paints for a quiet fun afternoon and something to show off the kids at uh, school or the family. Enough of uh, rattling on about the history and nostalgias of uh, Airfix and a bit of my uh, build. I found all the parts to fit very well. There was no distortion and everything just clicked far better than some of the earlier Airfix kits that I've uh, built from the 90s, the 80s, the uh, early 20s uh, silver boxes. It was uh, quite a uh, thrill and it was an enjoyable build as uh, recommended by my peers. I super glued the uh, rubber tracks to each wheel to prevent the heat molding method and it's uh, falling off, stretching or eventually breaking the wheels. All the plastic pieces were glued with the Mr. Hobby quick drying plastic cement with black colouring. I could see where I've oozed excess glue or made mistakes and was able to fill sand repair later on. The build itself did not have any major uh, seam lines as the turret was fairly uh, boxed and the seams were on the uh, edges. The cannon was a bit uh, oval shaped. It could be sanded or replaced with something aftermarket but I kind of like its uh, vintage uh, glory and all of its uh, imperfections. And in the end, once paint started to be applied and primed it into mere lacquer grey, I've kind of uh, fallen completely for this uh, design, even though it does not uh, truly represent the true exa existing examples or historical records of the Panther. Uh, through airbrushing, I used the Mr. Color gradient sand set to match the shadings of uh, the boxing applied the decals, a few sludge washes with multiple layers of uh, matte clear lacquer and hand painted all the smaller fine details, the tracks and the inner rubber bits for the wheels. Everything received a final flat matte coat, a bit of pigment weathering, a bit more washes and we called it finish by super gluing the turret on at the end. I found drilling a hole on top of the uh, hull and suspending with a clip made it so much easier to paint than airbrushing one half, waiting to dry and eventually flipping. The finish result is pretty good. I'm extremely pleased how it turned out. I did like the shading with the multiple colours and the uh, liquid black to get the wheel wells and the underneath just right especially uh, the back with uh, all the vents and the uh, soot build-up. 
a lot of weathering washes was focused on the tank tracks that was colored with burnt iron a little more free airbrushing on the tip of the muzzle brake and I remember doing some grime streaking with washers and weathering pencil silver chipping also with a weathering pencil can't complain uh, at all received very well this concludes my airfix build uh, these videos do very well I'm also very fond of airfix as it was one of the earlier kits I attended for uh, tanks while milling around uh, Gundams and do wish to complete the entire set at my own pace and review every model on this channel thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content check out the description section for social media links and uh, sources all that sort of thing we'll catch you guys next time stay tuned